Good morning, Sunday School class. Pastor Eric here once again for virtual Sunday School lesson number 27, Elijah and the Prophets of Baal. This is a good one. All right, we are on page 107 in your Bible story book, and you're invited to read along with me now. God divided the 12 tribes into two kingdoms, Judah in the south and Israel in the north. The worst king in the north was named Ahab. He married a woman named Jezebel. She was a princess from another kingdom and was very, very bad. She taught Ahab to worship her god named Baal. Got to say it like that too. Baal. Okay. Jezebel killed God's prophets and made the people of Israel worship Baal. Just when the northern kingdom was as far away from God as it could be, the Lord sent a great prophet named Elijah to bring his people back. Elijah told King Ahab, There shall be no dew or rain these years except by my word. And it stopped raining. Food wouldn't grow in the fields, and the animals couldn't stay alive. Finally, after three and a half years, God told Elijah to go back to King Ahab and gather the people together at a place called Mount Carmel. They would have a big contest to prove who was the real God, Baal, or the Lord God. Elijah was the only prophet of God, but Baal had 450 prophets. Baal's prophets built an altar put wood down, and then put a bull on it. Then they prayed to Baal and set the wood on fire. But nothing happened. They shouted and danced around wildly, but still no fire. They even cut themselves with knives to get Baal's attention, but nothing happened. Because Baal wasn't real. Then, late in the afternoon, Elijah told the people to come near. He set up an altar with twelve large stones, one for each of the twelve tribes of Israel. He laid out the wood, set the bull on the altar, and dug a deep trench around it. He told men to fill four jars full of water and pour them over the meat and the wood. He told them to do it, to pour water a second time, and then a third time. The wood was soaking wet, and water filled the trenches. Then Elijah prayed, and the Lord God sent fire down from heaven. It burned up the meat, the wood, the stones, all the water, and even the dirt. The people shouted, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Elijah told King Ahab God was going to send rain, so he had better get into his chariot and race home before the rain came. Then the Spirit of God came on Elijah. He ran to the same town faster than King Ahab's horses could even run. It's a miracle. God's love for you is just as strong as it was for the people of Israel. He sent the great prophet Elijah to call them back. And he sent an even greater prophet, his son Jesus, to save us from our sins and bring us back to him. Let's pray. Lord God, you are an amazing God. Even when your people turned away and a terrible king ruled over them, you sent them your great prophet Elijah. Make my faith strong like Elijah's, so I can boldly tell my family, friends, and neighbors how you sent Jesus, your son, to save us. Amen. Baal, or Baal, was what we call an idol, a false god, something that people worship and believe in that's not really real. Anything that's not Jesus that people believe in or worship is what we call an idol, okay? And God doesn't want us to worship idols because his son, Jesus, is our only savior and our only God. So, God actually sent the prophet Elijah to the people so that they would know who the real God was. They, of course, um, didn't want to believe Elijah, and so they participated in this strange contest of building two altars and then praying to each of their gods to see who 
was real enough to send fire down from heaven. Since Baal wasn't real, there was no fire. And when God heard Elijah's prayer, he sent down not just a little bit of fire, but a lot of fire so that everybody would know that he was real and that idols like Baal shouldn't be worshipped. So that was a great miracle that God sent down fire that not only burned up the wood and the meat on the altar, but also the stones and the dirt underneath. That's a big, big fire. All of this is to show us that Jesus is real and that only Jesus is worthy of worship and prayer. And that's why we only talk about Jesus when we are here at church and why we don't have any idols set up anywhere or anything like that. We worship Jesus alone. Three questions for you. Our God is powerful. What are some of the most powerful things you see in nature? When you think about the world around us, what are some of the most powerful animals or forces or things in nature? And then remember that God is even more powerful than that. But what are some of the most powerful things out there in the world today? Second, Elijah was called to tell the people that God still loved them and that he wanted them to believe in him. How can you tell others about the love that Jesus has for them? Think about maybe friends or family. How might you tell them or show them that Jesus loves them too? Just think about that for a second. Finally, if Jesus came today and did all the powerful miracles that we know he did, like healing the sick, turning water into wine, feeding 5,000 people with just a little bit of food, walking on water, rising from the dead, calling Lazarus out of the tomb. If Jesus were to do miracles like that today, do you think more people would believe in him or not? Do you think if Jesus came down and did a whole bunch of miracles that more people would believe in him or do you think that they wouldn't? Why or why not? Those are my three questions for you today as we talk about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer, right? That's what we normally do. My brain went blank there for a second. All right, let's pray together, okay? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for joining me here today. Wish you a wonderful week. Hope to see you again next week as we talk about another installment of Redeemer's Virtual Sunday School. Take care and God bless.